Hello everyone, it's Krista Cole. I just wanted to pop on a little bit earlier because I want to make sure I've got a good setup and the lighting is good. I think we're good. Just having a peek here. It's a little bit dark in this area, but you guys can let me know if it's hard to see. I know struggling with lighting is always fun. Can you guys see that okay? Is the color okay? Um, I know Yvonne is also popping on to help me with questions today because it'll be a little bit difficult for me to see the questions and the comments because I don't have a second device. But I think we'll work with that. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, we're good. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today um, and joining this weekend of demos. I'd like to thank Alina for hosting this online event. So I'll just give it a moment. Hello everyone, hello. So today I am going to be demoing using Ugly Duckling's tapered square tippies, tippies, tips, and I'm going to follow that with colored acrylic application. Alrighty, so I've got everything ready to go. And this little finger here is feeling a little bit lonely, so I'm going to match it up with the rest. These were done using Ugly Duckling's Tip Ease Tips Tapered Square, followed with colored acrylic application, and of course finished with some bling. So today I'm going to be using number 32 from my colored acrylic vintage elegance collection. So in this collection, I'm just gonna show you guys, there are 12 beautiful colors that I have chosen in my collection. And today we're gonna be using one of the sparkly ones, which is one of my favorites, which is number 32. So I'll show you guys that now. So this is our latest color colored acrylic collection that is available. This is a limited edition and while supplies last. So I'm gonna be using this one today over the tippies tips. So I'm just gonna start off by prepping my natural nail. If you guys have any questions, um, I know Yvonne is there, Alina for help. It's, I can kind of see the questions, so I'm gonna kind of be going up and down a little bit just to see if I can catch anything. So I'm just gonna lightly push back on my proximal fold. I'm just gonna prep the natural nail using Ugly Duckling's medium file. I'm just gonna remove the natural free edge. Anytime there's any um, extra natural free edge, it can really affect the position and the application of the tip. So I wanna really make sure that I take most of that free edge off. So you can either prep with a medium sanding band, which is generally what I use. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna stick with my medium file. Lightly etching against the cuticle area and the side walls, just prepping that natural nail. This pressure is very light. It's really important to make sure you got a good prep prior to applying any product over the natural nail. This is really to ensure good adhesion. And I do have a little bit of gel left over from the last set that I had on. Today I'm going to apply the tip ease with our natural base coat. Generally I do use our Ugly Duckling clear gel to apply the tip ease. You can use Velveteen Acro Gel, you can use regular acrylic. It's really up to you what you prefer to use. They all work great. All right, so I'm just gonna give that a little dust. Now I'm gonna come in and apply Ugly Duckling Prep. So I'm just gonna dehydrate that nail. Just applying the littlest bit, making sure that any product that I apply is not coming into contact with the skin. 
Then I am going to apply Ugly Ducklings Primer. This is a non-acid primer. So even if you do make contact with the skin, it will not burn. This primer acts more like a double-sided sticky tape. So it's got a great bond to the natural nail and a great bond to the product. Before I apply my natural base, I just want that to dry a little bit. If we apply pro um, product over a wet primer, you can run the risk of having discoloration of the product, bubbling, all sorts of things. So it's really important to make sure before you apply any product that you let that primer fully set. You do not need to cure it in a UV or an LED lamp. Okay, so before I came on live, I actually already picked my tip. I've sized it to my nail. It's very important to make sure when you're sizing these tips to have it fit a little bigger than too snug. If it's too snug, you're putting a lot of pressure on that natural nail plate. So when you go to apply the product, it's going to sit there, but it's also pulling up on the natural nail. So it's very important to make sure when you're using these tips to have a little bit bigger fit, but still have it so that it's not too big. If you find that some of the sidewalls of the tip are too big and it does touch the sidewalls, you can alter it by shaping the sidewalls and the cuticle area. Because not everyone has the same perfect shaped nail plate, so you'll have to adjust it based on each client's finger. Okay, so this is prepped. My natural nail is prepped. I have my tippies. This is actually number eight. Our tippies come in 500 packs, and we also do have the 50 pack refill sizes that you can buy separately, because I know sometimes we use more of one size than we do the other. So before we actually apply the tip, it's very important to make sure that we are removing the shine on the underside of the tip. I made the mistake the first time using these, I forgot to do that, and within 20 minutes after applying my nails, it popped right off. So we need to etch that really well. And I'm just going to take just a medium sanding band to etch that out. Making sure to etch that entire area where it's gonna make contact with that natural nail. Some of the tips actually are too small for that sanding band barrel to get in on the tip, especially the smaller numbers. So if that's the case, I just take my medium file and I'll just etch the inside with the tip of my file and that works just the same. Okay, so now my tip is ready. I just wanna make sure where I apply, we can see that the tip of my natural nail is still on some shiny part of the tip. So I need to go back and etch a little bit more. And this might be a case where it doesn't quite fit. It did just a little bit, but any smaller of a tip, then we're gonna have issues with using the e-file. So my tip is all ready to go. So this is when you would want to apply your choice of product. In this case, I'm going to be using Ugly Ducklings Natural Base. This base is amazing for natural nails if you're using gel polish. Um, very long lasting wear with this. So I love using this with our tippies. Great product to use. Um, my second choice would be our Ugly Duckling sculpting gel in clear which works awesome so now what i'm going to do is just come in and put a thin layer of our natural base on my natural nail we don't want to put too too much because if we have too much product on the nail plate when we go to put our tippies on the nail the product will pull all the way down to the natural free edge and kind of puddle out here got a little fuzz there or it will be exposed on the side walls so we really want to make sure we just put the right amount on and it's no big deal if once you apply the the tip and you notice a bunch of products coming underneath you can clear that out with a brush or just take it off remove some product and then apply the tip again so we don't want to cure that i'm going to come in with my tippies and of course i forgot to mention we do have clamps these clamps are great for holding 
the tippies in place when you're using a gel product um, be, or any product for that matter but when you actually go to have your clients put their hand in the light we don't want these tips to be popping off in the middle of curing because then we'll have little air bubbles and pockets in there and it it will just eventually your your tip will just pop right off so it's really important to make sure we have a proper clamp to hold the tip in place so i'm going to come up a little closer so you guys can see and watch how the product the gel is moving all the way down to the natural free edge i like to butt the tip up to the cuticle area and then press the product down you'll notice how it'll make contact all the way through and you want to make sure there's no air pockets in there okay so i'm going to place it on and i'm going to slowly move it down and if for example you have an area on the nail that's not connected no big deal just kind of i just kind of do this wiggling motion and that will help kind of push that gel product around so now i'm just going to turn it this way and make sure it's straight if i have any product coming out the sides you can remove that with your gel brush but you can see as soon as i let go the air pockets are starting to come in so i'm going to press down a little bit more and then i'm going to come in and put my clamp on right away to hold that down okay just like that and i'm just going to put that into the light for 45 seconds for a full cure when you're using this product the tippies it's important to just do one at a time i will prep all of the tips together and do all the steps together to save time but when you're doing this type of nail it's really important to make sure that each nail is being applied correctly so that you don't have any issues with bubbles popping through that would ultimately affect the adhesion How's everyone doing? So these tips are amazing. They're great for fast service. Um, these tips actually, the length of them is the maximum length of the tippies is 32 millimeters. Hope I said that correct. Um, and they're great because if you don't want them that long, you can cut them down and shorten them and have them as a shorter nail. A lot of times people ask, let's see here, okay, so we're good. A lot of time people ask if you can apply product directly over top. And that's why today I wanted to show you using our colored acrylic how you can do that. Generally, I would just finish at this, buff it, and apply gel polish, add any nail art designs you choose, crystal application, and call it a day. But if you want to do some, you know, encapsulation of glitters, colored acrylics you can absolutely do that as well or with gel products as well too now that is fully cured so what i'm going to do is you guys can see kind of where they're similar right now in shape but i actually taper this a little bit more to give way for some product um, sometimes i find if i'm leaving the tippies this length um, i feel like they're a little bit it's they're thin they feel thin but they're they're lovely that way because i know everyone's aiming for you know thin nails and not having them too chunky but i prefer to have a little bit of reinforcement of product over top if i'm choosing to keep my nails this mm -hmm. long um in this case i'm going to keep the length and i'm just going to take my medium file which is my favorite file of our ugly duckling files my go-to file and i'm just going to taper in the sidewalls because I like having a more slender looking nail. You don't have to, this is optional. And really taper those sidewalls in. Now what I'm going to do is just come in and remove the shine because I'm going to be applying product on top. Just slightly remove all the shine. I'm gonna dust that off and I'm actually gonna come back in with my medium sanding band and just blend a little bit around that cuticle area. Most of the time in this case, if I was just leaving this tip and going to apply gel polish, I wouldn't necessarily come in and blend the cuticle area. 
for myself because I always have a good application, but some people, depending on your adjustments to the tip, may need a little bit of blending in that area. And because we're coming in and we're going to be applying acrylic on top, I wanna make sure that there is no ridge popping up and that we have a good application. Okay. I'm gonna dust that off. Now, because we've already made contact with the natural nail, I don't need to reapply prep or primer to this at all. I'm just gonna come in and apply my colored acrylic directly over top of the tip, okay? So what I wanna do is on this one here, I just use number 32 and blended it out. On this finger, I use a little bit of Foo Foo Pink on the nail plate, and then I blended 32 over top of it, just to kind of hide my natural nail a little bit. But at the end, we're gonna be putting bling on top, so most of that will be covered anyways. So I'm going to take Ugly Duckling's Foo Foo Pink Acrylic, which is a full coverage pink. Great for um, creating longer nail beds nail plates for your extension work. Great for hiding any imperfections on the nail plate. So now I'll take number 10 acrylic brush, which is my favorite brush to use. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of the Foo Foo Pink around the cuticle area. Then I'm going to fade it down towards where my natural nail is. Again, really making sure you're not making any contact with the skin. And because I wanna apply this very thinly, I don't wanna apply it too, too thick. I'm gonna use it a little bit more wet so that I can kind of blend that out nicer. Just add a little bit more here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, so our Ugly Duckling liquid monomer is very low odor and it has superior strength and bond. So when you're using this in combination with any of our powders, it is very self-leveling. The properties of it really make it easy for nail techs to apply the product with ease. So I know there's a lot of people who maybe are have never used acrylic before maybe are just primarily gel techs, but honestly, this product is just so easy to use. It really makes your life easy when it comes to application. And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of number 32, and I'm going to place it on the free edge, and I'm just gonna blend it back. So the beauty about with these colored acrylics is a little goes a long way. So I just apply the smallest little bead and I'm just going to blend it out. It will indicate on our website which colored acrylics we recommend you capping. Some of these ones with the heavier pigments, we recommend that you cap in clear. And then the ones that don't indicate whether to cap them, you can just fully sculpt with them. And it again is preference, but I prefer to apply thin in the colored acrylic and then cap with clear. Just a little bit more. And when you're adding any bling or embellishments on top, you don't have to get too, too picky with your fade line. I find sometimes we are so picky with making sure it's faded out perfectly, but at the end of the day, when you know you're gonna be covering it, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna cover it with embellishments anyways. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with our premium clear acrylic and I'm just going to lightly cap this in. I don't know if you guys can see it or how the lighting is, but this is so sparkly. So in my Vintage Elegance collection, which I'm very proud of, um, it was inspired, this collection was inspired because I love everything vintage color-wise. Um, I create all my, you know, 40 roses using the colors that I chose in this collection. 
For me, it's just the whole romantic feel. I love the look of soft colors. So that is kind of what inspired me to pick these colors from our full color acrylic line. And these were my top 12. So as you can see, I'm just applying just the littlest amount of clear acrylic. And I'm almost just kind of blending it down because I don't want to have to file this tons. This is just a very thin layer of acrylic. So if I put too much on there, it's going to take too much time for filing. So I'm just doing this in sections. With our colored acrylics, you can create beautiful fades, blends. Um, most of our colors, except for these type ones with the heavier pigment, are great for 3D work. I use them for French lines. You can marble them. They're amazing. Alrighty. And of course, depending on where you are located, you know, will depend on the ratio of liquid to powder that you choose to use. In this case, you know, I need to use a lot less monomer because it's it's cooler temperature here in Victoria. Whereas in the summertime, I might have mm -hmm. to kind of adjust my ratio because it'll get more humid and hot. So the product will kind of set up a little bit quicker. I'm just gonna add a bit here because I noticed a dip. I will let that set and then I will do a quick file. So while that is setting, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my some of my favorite products with Ugly Duckling. Well, all of them are my favorite. They're amazing. They just are awesome to work with. They're easy to use. But as bling girl, I love everything that sparkles, especially the bling. So today we are going to be using some of Ugly Duckling's Clear as Mud Crystals. I don't know if you guys can see the light here is amazing. So it's like I've been staring at it, just kind of reflecting back and forth. So we have our Clear as Mud Crystals. We have them in pointed backs as well as flat backs. In pointed back, they come in clear and AB. We have them in the shapes of marquee, round, square, and two sizes of teardrops. You guys can see here teardrops right here which are my favorite and I actually love the little square ones too so we're going to be using that in a cluster today to apply the crystals none other than ugly ducklings stick it gel this is amazing a little tip um, if you ever find that your ugly duckling stick it is kind of frosted and it's not clear like this let me just grab it and open it See, this is an example of it being a little bit set. It's kind of been it's too cool. So unfortunately, I leave my products in my car overnight, which I probably shouldn't do. So it kind of goes to the state. So in order to get it to a clear gel consistency, we just recommend that you warm it up in hot water which is pretty easy. This is still usable. I'll still use it today and show you guys how that's done. But if it ever turns like this, you just need to warm it up in warm water. Directions are on our website for that as well. Okay, let's come back and have a feel. See how this is setting up. Still not quite there. To apply all my bling, I'm going to use our blinger tool. This tool is amazing. The beautiful thing about this tool is you don't ever have to replace the entire unit. You can just get replacement tips. So these pop off very easily. So when this gets kind of worn down, because it is a wax tip and over time, it will, will eventually wear down and you want a new one, you can just buy the replacement tips for that. Okay. Hope everyone's doing good. Okay, so I'm gonna just slightly File this just a little bit. It's a little cool in here, so it's taking a bit longer to set up. Is there anyone who is watching who has never tried acrylic before? If so, why? Just out of curiosity, I'd like to see 
you know, some people, you know, either have learned primarily on gel and that's what they've always kind of done, or maybe they're intimidated by acrylic a little bit. Acrylic was my first love. I will admit, um, in school, we learned gel and acrylic, but we kind of got to pick what our favorite one was and work on that. And acrylic was the one that I chose to do the most. So up until probably a year ago, I was all for acrylic only. But working with our Ugly Duckling gel has just been amazing for me to build my hand in it. And I love using gel. So it's kind of one of those things like over the years, we as nail technicians, we get comfortable with what products we like to use. Never really, you know, challenge ourselves or maybe experiment with something different. And I'm so thankful I did because using our gel is amazing. We also offer Acrogel, which is our rendition of a hybrid gel and acrylic, which is a fabulous product to use as well. So if you have never tried acrylic, just because, you know, of maybe what you've been told or you have fears that you're not going to do it very well, just try it out. You'll be amazed at how much you might enjoy it. Okay, so my rough filing is done. I'm just going to take my medium sanding band and go around the cuticle area just to get a good blend. Great. Happy with that. Now I'm going to come in and just give it a buff. And I'm going to use Ugly Duckling's Coarse Buffer. Give it a nice buff here. And now for the fun part, you guys, my favorite part. I can't do a set of nails without having some sort of bling. Because to me, for me personally, the set doesn't look finished. All right. So now I'm just going to leave that. Um, I'm going to put on my stick it and all my bling prior to actually putting on my top coat. We recommend if you're using stick it over top of a gel polish that you do apply it over top of the inhibition layer of the gel polish and not finish with a no wipe top coat. You can finish with a no wipe top coat if you choose to. We haven't heard or I've never even had issues if I've done it that way with, you know, the bling coming off. But just to ensure that we have good adhesion, I'm going to go right over top of my finished buffed nail. All right. So now I'll come in and I'm going to take my stickit. So because this one isn't, this one's a little bit cold, it's kind of got that, you see how it kind of gets gritty like that? This is not normal for this. It's just because this was in a cooler temperature. This will still work fine. No problem. I've used this quite a lot actually um, in my salon when it's like this. But if it does go like that, just make sure you put the lid on nice and tight, put it in warm water for a couple minutes and it'll go back to its original consistency. Okay? So now I'm gonna do a cluster on the center of my nail. So when I'm using the bigger pointed back crystals, I wanna make sure I have enough stick it on there to hold them in place. Okay? It's really important to make sure you do because if you don't, then you'll find crystals will come off. If you use this product correctly, you'll never have any crystals fall off. They will stay put until your clients are coming back three, four weeks later. So I have a little bit there. I'm going to take my larger pointed back teardrop, which is my favorite. It's the biggest one. I just want to take a moment to show you guys that reflection. I hope it's clear because I know whenever um, I do videos, it's hard to focus because the camera is trying to focus on that bling so I hope it's not been an issue so I'm going to place that one there and I've got enough exposed on that side so I'm going to come in and maybe tuck in a round pointed back so I'm kind of just butting three of them up together just like that push it in together okay so there we have it and I'm going to cure that just maybe for like 20 seconds just to hold that in place because I'm going to be going back and forth in the lamp quite a bit here with more um, crystals so it will get a full cure. We recommend for a full cure between 45 seconds to a minute just depending on 
how much you're using. For the cluster, I used a little, quite a big solid amount. In that case, I would probably ensure at least, at least 60 seconds to have that fully cured there. Okay, that one's good. So then basically what I wanna do is when I'm applying this, I'm just applying where I want to put my crystals. If I have too much extra stick it in place, you don't wanna cure it if you've got no crystals on it because it's gonna create um, little bumps on the nail, right? So it'll kind of affect where you're putting your crystals and the positioning. So I like, I'm just gonna kind of trail here and generally I just kind of go where the wind takes me. I just apply around it. So I always work my way around it before I start trailing it out. And before I was always intimidated to use crystals and bling because I just really didn't know or have a game plan of where to put the crystals. But honestly, over time, you just kind of play with it. I just apply a little bit here and there, see if it looks good. If I don't like it, you can take it off. I'm gonna pull this more in frame here. So now I'm just going to slowly work these crystals around. And honestly, this blinger tool is amazing because you just set it, you pick them up very lightly and it just releases so easily. Oh, don't have enough there. And I also use these metal beads. These metal beads are great for fillers. Um, I never used to use them, but I always noticed in pictures afterwards that there's always that empty space in my designs so using these bigger beads littler beads have really made a difference so i've pretty much filled all of that area so i'm going to just quickly cure that and hold that into place and i'm going to grab a little bit more of my smaller caviar beads so I'm just curing, kind of doing a quick cure on this just to hold it so it's not going anywhere. Especially if you have a lot of work to do, you don't want to be waiting forever for that to cure in each layer that you do. Now I'm just going to kind of pull that down. And see, yes, it's gritty, but it still works fine. I just manipulate it a little bit more. If you don't have access to hot water at the moment, then you can definitely still use it. It's really no problem. It doesn't affect it at all. Your crystals will still stay in place. So then I like to take some of these flat backs and just butt them up against the cluster. And then just slowly work my way down, transitioning into smaller crystals. Putting some beads in there. I'm actually just going to grab some of my smaller ones here. Sometimes for me, it's more so like, oh, when do I stop applying the crystals? Because I could go on forever. I could have a whole nail full of it. But that's just me. And you don't have to always do crazy amounts of crystal. You know, clients just like to have a little bit maybe on the cuticle area, which looks nice too. So just slowly starting to taper that down. And I'm just going to add a few more. And then I'm pretty, pretty happy with my overall design. If you guys ever have any questions for me, you can always private message me. Um either on Instagram, which is Christical, or I do have a nails related Facebook page, which is Christical Does Nails. You can reach out to me anytime. It's not a matter of picking it up, it's just they <laughs> like to move around. Okay. I'm pretty good with that. I might do one more here and then put one just at the top there to hide that hole. I think the main thing is to make sure you got all the areas covered so that, you know, hair is not gonna get caught in between the crystals. Just fill it in that way. I'm just gonna finish off with one more. <laughs> These guys don't wanna, they don't wanna get caught. 
So Stick It is also amazing for Crystal Pixies too. It works fabulous for using those little guys. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna do full cure, 45 seconds on that. And then we're gonna finish with no wipe top coat. I'm just looking up at some questions here. How do I work with nails this long? That's a great question. As nail techs, I think we get used to it and accustomed to having longer nails. Generally, because I do a lot of computer work, I have them relatively short. But when I do have them long, it doesn't take a long time for me to adjust. And I can still do dishes. I can still do housework, no problem. It just takes a little bit to get used to, that's for sure. I know my daughter loves my nails when I have them all blinging up. <laughs> she's actually here with me right now, shaking her head. Because she's definitely not her mother's child when it comes to the bling, right, sweetie? <laughs> I know. All right, so now that's fully cured, I'm going to come in with my No Wipe Top Coat, which is a super high shine top coat. Love it, love it. And I'm just going to basically coat the entire extension, kind of butt that No Wipe up around the crystals, some of the smaller beads, just to help reinforce it. But do not cover over the crystals with the top coat mm -hmm. because you don't want to take that clarity away from the sparkle. So now it's gonna be really tricky to get in this smaller areas without having that brush touch the natural nail. So excuse me for a second, I'm just gonna grab one of my, my other brushes. Mm. Just clean it off here. And I'm going to just take my painter brush. Usually Detailer 2 or my um, painter brush works great for this. So I'll just put a little bit of the no wipe top coat on this corner, take my painter and just fill in around the cuticle area. So stick it does have a slight inhibition mm -hmm. layer. So mm -hmm. if there's any extra exposed stick it, you want to make sure you're covering it with a top coat or you just lightly cleanse it with a cleanser with our gel cleanser is fine too. All right, so now I'm gonna do a full cure. And there you have it. I'll show you guys the final results. I'll also take a picture and post this later on Alina's wall as well. Oh, Priscilla says, hi, Peyton. She says she's being shy right now. She says, hi, Priscilla. <laughs> Peyton thinks Priscilla is a princess. You mm -hmm. do. Yeah, you I did. She looks good. I, like I know. Makeup. She likes Priscilla's makeup. So cute. Oh, Natasha's here. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to pop up and read the comments, but I'll look through them later. Okay, so I think we're almost fully done. Let's see the final result, you guys. A little bit of bling action. So products used today, Ugly Ducklings mm -hmm. Tippies Tapered Square Tips, applied with natural base coat. I used from my Vintage Elegance Colored Acrylic Collection, which is limited edition, number 32, with Fufu Pink Acrylic on the nail plate. Files num uh, would be the medium file, coarse buffer. Stick it. Claire's Mud Crystals, Blinger Tool, and No Wipe Top Coat. And there you go. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining in. I hope all your questions have been answered. Again, you can always find me on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, which is Christical, C-H-R-Y-S-T-A-C-L-E, or on Facebook, Christical Does Nails. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again, Alina, for this wonderful weekend of demos. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye. Bye from Christical and Peyton.